Hello guys and welcome back to another bucket plugin tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Vault API and more specifically the economy part of it. There's three parts to the Vault API, economy, chat, and permissions. Today we're only going to be going over the economy. Now there are many, many aspects of a Vault economy plugin. Well, what are we making? Are we making the plugin that handles the economy, that stores the player's money? Or are we making a plugin that just modifies the player's money? Today, we're going to be focusing on just modifying the player's money, which is pretty simple. But setting it up is a little more complex. Before we start, you want to make sure to add Vault as a dependency for your plugin. If you don't know how to do this through Maven or Gradle, which is provided by Vault, I'll put a link in the description below for that code. What you can do is go up here to File, project structure and then where you had a dependency for your craft bucket jar just put it in the dependency for the vault jar right next to it and make sure to set it to provide because you don't want it to compile with the plugin anyways now that we have that out of the way we can go ahead and start the first thing we need to do is hook into the vault plugin now with that link i have for the code for the maven and gradle code if you scroll down a little further you will find all this code which is helping you uh, set up the vault API, but I'm going to do mostly be explaining here So what you need to do is just copy this thing this this one method right here and put it right here Inside of your code and then you can go ahead and import all of these different Fields and I usually prefer to keep the variable eco instead of econ just because that makes more sense in my brain it's easier for me to follow and understand if I just set it to eco not econ because I'm like who uses econ anyways enough of that out of the way now we want to run this method in our on enable and vault also provides a little little if statement for us to use right here so we don't have to make our own and I'm just gonna leave it just like that if you need to make a log variable this is how I would recommend doing it not the way vault has shown here so this is outdated and it's not I don't why why would you do this this it gets the logger for your plugin and if you want to get rid of this and just put info and you can get rid of the string format now because you don't need that you can get rid of this because it formats it for you and get rid of this as well and there we go that's how that's how you should do it not the vault way anyways there's gonna be a couple other things that I changed from the vault API how they say to do it but it's it's for the better trust me anyways this is all we need to do for now in our main class now I'm going to go over to our other class where I have a command called money command now this command when it's going to run when the player tests slash money and it's going to be two variables the first one is going to be either deposit or withdrawal and the second one is going to be the value of money that they want to deposit or withdraw so if we want to do anything with the vault api in this class we need to get an instance of it but we don't need an instance of the whole api just this economy variable right here so to do this we're going to make a constructor inside of this class and it's going to be a public constructor because we need to access it from our main class and this constructor we're going to want to pass in economy from net.milk dot or net dot milk bowl dot vault dot economy and i'm going to name this eco and inside of this money command class we need to add a property up at the top and we can make this a private economy eco and then we can set this economy to economy there we go and now we have our instance of economy inside of this class so that's all good and dandy so far now Whenever the player types in this command, I want to make sure that the second argument is 100% a number so we don't get any errors whenever we're trying to format it and use it inside of different methods. So, the way we do this is using a try and catch statement so we can try to parse a number out of a string. And the exception we're going to be catching here is number format exception. And we can go ahead and name this exception E. And then above this if statement, we want to make a variable that's going to be a double that's going to represent the amount of money that the player wants to either deposit or withdraw. But we're going to set it to zero for now. And then inside of the try catch statement, we can try to set this amount variable. And then if we go to the double class from java.lang, there's this handy dandy method we can use called parse double. 
and it just takes a string which is perfect for this scenario because the user inputs a string so we can go ahead and get their number that they input now if this is not a number let's say they type in some letters in there or they type in an extra decimal point or whatever the case may be we're going to go to here so we're just going to send the sender a message saying invalid number and then we want to return because we don't want the rest of the code to run but now that we have that out of the way there's one more thing we want to do with this number we want to format it so it looks nice and pretty whenever we send the player a chat message saying they have either deposited or withdrew a certain amount of money so Java has this really nice class we can use once again they have everything I swear they think of everything so we can go ahead and use this class called decimal format and we can we're going to make a new instance of this class that we can just call format for right now this doesn't really matter what we name it and we're going to create a new instance of the class as I said before and here we're going to put the format that we want so you always want to put 0.00, .00 at the end if you want to add the two cents because these are the three numbers that will always show no matter what let's say you only have values in these two spaces then this one will be zero let's say you only have a value in this space then these two will be zero these are defaults con these are constants these will never change if you don't input something in that position but let's say you want to have the option to add commas in the thousands place but not every single number has a thousands place what we can do here is insert some hashtags or not hashtags sorry number signs you didn't hear me say that number signs to represent possible numbers so if we put a comma right here and then put another number sign then that will give us the potential to put a comma between the thousands place and the hundreds place and we can do the same exact thing here for the millions place and so on and so forth you can go to like you have to stop at like two billion something because the java limitations so yeah that's great but we're not gonna we're not gonna go that high we're not gonna worry about that so but how do you apply this format to the amount? Well, to do that, use a function in the format class. So we can do format, or we want to make a variable for this so we can save it. So we're going to make it string formatted. And we can do format dot format. A little weird. I named the variable the same name as the method, but it's it's it works, it works. And then we can go ahead and put the amount right here. So now we have a nice formatted amount. Now we can get to the part where we actually deposit and withdraw the money from the player's bank account. So to do this, we're going to need to get an instance of the offline player. Because if we do an instance of a player, then if the player is offline, then the code won't work. So we always use offline player, whether the player is online or offline. So I'm going to make two variables, one for the online player and one for the offline player, because we're going to use both of them. Alright, and there we go. We have those two variables set up just like that. Now let's get to actually depositing and withdrawing the money. Now Vault wants you to do something super weird. Let me show you the Vault way first. Don't write this down yet, just in case you like my way better. But let me show you how Vault prefers to do it. What you do first is make a variable called economy response. And this can be named anything. I'm going to name it ER for simplicity. And this variable is going to be what you actually deposit or withdraw so what you do is you use your economy variable from up here and you can either deposit or withdraw from a play so in here you put your offline player variable and your amount just like that all right but you're not done here you also want to check to make sure that the transaction was a sec success so what you do for that is do er dot transaction success and that will return true or false and then you can put the true code here and the false code in here but the thing about this is there's not that many error messages so I don't see what the real purpose with this is we're gonna get rid of all that code because we don't want any of that this is the way I prefer to do it so first you want to get the balance of the player that you're either depositing or withdrawing money from so to do this we can do eco dot get balance offline player and then you can store this to a variable and do whatever 
Now that you have the player's balance, you can make sure that after you deposit the money to their account, it does not go over the cash limit for that server. And same thing if you're withdrawing, but to make sure it doesn't go under the cash minimum for that server. And that's how I would recommend doing it. But then after you do that, to get the balance and check to make sure that everything's all good with the transaction, then you can just do eco.deposit player, just like beforehand, offline player, and the amount. And then you can go ahead and send them a message and let them know that the transaction was a success. And then we can go ahead and add our formatted money right there. And then we can go ahead and copy this, paste it right here, and change this to withdraw player. And there we go. Now there's only one last thing we have to do, and that's pass in an instance of our economy to our command. And we do this whenever we register our command. Here we can just pass in the economy variable right there. And we're good to go. I will see you guys in the server. Now, there's two things you need to make sure you have installed on your server. The first thing is Vault, and the second is an economy plugin. I'm using Essentials, but you can use whatever. So, I'm going to type in slash money. Or first, I can check my balance to show you how much money I have. I have $5 in my account currently. And if I do slash money, deposit. And let me say I want to give myself $1,000. You can see I successfully deposited at $1,000 with our nice format. And we can go ahead here and check our new balance. You can also send the message to the player of their new balance after you add the money. It doesn't matter. You can get super creative with this. Thanks so much for watching. If I helped you out, make sure to leave a like. If you have any ideas for videos or you just need help, let me know down in the comments. And I will see you next time. Goodbye. Nice. The mutt's nuts, in fact.